and we are back thanks for clicking on the link welcome to good energy enjoy the content and everyone have a blessed day And you know we're back, guys. Welcome to Good Energy, where we talk tennis. We're going to be covering the live matches today. And I have some preview and predictions here in this video that you're going to like. The rain has pushed everything back, so uh, we can't get into the round of 64 just yet. But first, let's talk some news. Iga Swiatek, guys, she looks phenomenal. If you follow the channel, I've been saying it for so long, once Iga tightens up her serve in terms of accuracy once she gets mentally tough she's going to be eons above the tour level competition and we're seeing it all come together for the younger listeners and subscribers that haven't had the opportunity to see serena or venus play Iga right now is greatness in the making we thought naomi osaka would be the one to carry the torch but no, too many issues going on there. Iga Swiatek is it. She is hot and she is making history. Yes, she only has the one Grand Slam under her belt. However, if she could win the French Open here, that will put her tied with Venus, Venus Williams as the all-time leader in consecutive wins since 2000 in the Open era. Uh, that's the list there. Venus Williams, 35 consecutive wins. That is the most since 2000. Serena Williams right behind her with that streak at 2013 Wimbledon. Justine Hennon, Hall of Famer, great career. And Iga. Uh, so essentially if Iga wins the French Open, she'll be tied with Venus. And then the following tournament, uh, she'll probably be matched with a lesser qualifier, some type of opponent not on her level. She'll have a great chance to pass Venus. And if you're wondering what Serena Williams is doing these days, looking as beautiful as ever, running her multiple businesses, doing acting, um, you know, helping Will Smith uh, smack people in terms of getting Oscars for King Richard. If you have a chance, watch my King Rich Richard video that I did on here. Uh, great movie. I broke it down for you. And a great career, great story. Hats off to Serena. Hopefully she'll come back and hey win another slam we'd love to see that but let's get into today's tennis Barbara Kachikova the reigning and defending champion upset so we will have a new champion here at the French Open this year Bonjour Comitale Vu the crowd here is very hostile they were booing Barbara Kachikova and Barbara if you guys know sometimes she asks for it she takes a long time to serve she readjusts She's going to bathroom breaks. She's calling the physio. That U.S. Open issue with Garbini Muguruza has kind of labeled her as a dirty player. And look, I watched Barbora. Great player, great talent. I thought she had a chance to to repeat. I thought she had a real solid chance. But the reality is she's she's not in form. And, you know, to be take, taken out by Pari... It's, you know, it's tough. She has to get her rhythm, her timing back. That's, coming back from an injury, you're not going to have that. I would have liked to see her play at the Strasbourg Open or something to get warmed up. But she's out. We'll have a new champion, and hopefully she can find form by Wimbledon. Let's talk about Aza Tomjanovic. Is she a journey woman at this stage of her career? She hasn't won a championship. Um, but she can get out of the first round of any slam. And this was a huge upset win over Annette Conteve. Annette, just, she's having a rough year so far after a great end to last year. But Aza Tamjanovic, um, I mean, she's essentially split her last 10 matches, but she's got the power. If Aza's not making mistakes, she can beat a lot of these top tier opponents. And if you take a look here, 
Annette was very aggressive. Uh, 25 winners, 30 unforced errors, though. So she was, this, this, which is not really her game. Normally, these numbers would be flipped around. Asa Tomjanovic is normally the one making 30 unforced errors. But the reality here is I think Asa is taking a Sloan Stevens type of approach. Look, just keep the ball in net. This is clay season. You don't have to really be too aggressive. You need to be more defensive uh, with the elevation, the way the ball travels flat in the air. Just keep it in play. Play smart and safe. And a lot of the powerful backhanded hitters, they're going to make mistakes because clay is about having a good forehand. Keep the ball in play. Uh, make the baseliners get aggressive and sloppy. Be smart, defensive, and tactical. And you can beat a lot of these baseliners. Uh, a lot of these players that like to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like the Sabalinkas that like to hit these powerful shots, when they see how the ball travels, it literally, they're hitting their arms out. And the defensive players are just frustrating them. And if you take a look at Annette Conteve, very frustrating day today. And this has been the, the story with her the last few tournaments. Very frustrated. She's having a lot of fun off the court. But, you know, you, you have to put what pays the bills first, top, center, and priority. And the reality here is a lot of these top... I was talking to one of my subscribers, and he couldn't have said it any better. He said a lot of these top tier ladies, these top ranked ladies, they're losing to lesser opponents. And it's true. The reality is any woman on any given day can upset the other. Uh, tennis is like a very competitive sport in terms of women's tennis especially. And another upset on the day, not really an upset, but Naomi Osaka taken out by Amanda Anasimova. And the reality here is, look, the creator gave all of us talents. If you're lucky enough to tap into that talent, find it, and realize what it is, you have to use it, perfect it, master it. Naomi Osaka cannot play once a month and expect to be top 20 talent, or even lesser than that. You can't play once a month and expect to win majors and championships. So her biggest comment today is it's pointless to play Wimbledon. Look, if that's how you feel at this point, she's like the Conor McGregor of women's tennis. You know, you're literally playing when you want to and you're expecting great results. It doesn't work that way. When the creator gives you talents, you have to perfect them, fine tune them and use them. Use it or lose it. And that's Amanda Anna Samoa. She's smiling. She's laughing. And the reality is she's aggressive. She's so aggressive. Osaka just doesn't have the form to keep up with her power, and she's strong, you know. In terms of her forehand, I'd rank it top 10 in terms of power. I mean, she's up there with the Osakas, with whom she just beat. She's up there with the Danielle Collins. She's up there with the Paula Bedosas, the Simona Halops. You know, she's right there with the Ina Sviantex, the Marie Sacris. She has the power in her forehand, and... You know, I, I think she's probably better than Sabalenka, considering she owns a head-to-head to, -head to Sabalenka 4-1. Uh, but nonetheless, Naomi Osaka, if she's going to continue to want majors and success in women's tennis, then she's going to have to take it a little bit more serious. She's going to have to do what Iga did, hire a mental coach. Actually, I think she did already. And... Focus on tennis. Get back in the gym. Practice. Play these tournaments. Put your pride aside. It's not about losing, but it's about competing at your best. And I think right now she's going through a slump like Bianca and Dressu where she thinks she has to win every tournament. No, just compete. Come in your best form and fitness. And your tools, your God-given talents will take care of the rest. But hey, Naomi is out. And... Look, there's a lot of great talents on tour. We're not going to miss her. That's the reality. Another great talent, Coco Golf. Now, this is a story I want to talk about. Um, the chair umpire accused her of possibly 
a coaching violation. Her father was clapping repeatedly. Listen, we we can't prove this. We have no proof that her coach and father was giving her signals. We can't. What we can prove is that these fans in this match were very against Marino. Coco Golf versus Marino. This is the match we're talking about here. The first set went to a tie break. The second set uh, was a bagel. That's right, big fat donut. Six love, Coco Golf dominated. What we do know is these fans were hostile, they were rude, they were loud, and the French Open fans, this fan base is very tough on American players. They have historically been. Go watch the Venus William days in the early 2000s where they would boo Serena and Venus. The reality here is this crowd was very hostile and very tough. From my approach, I just see a father trying to motivate his daughter to win and do well when the crowd is just not giving you anything you know um i i don't see the cheating and the reality is let's take a look at men's tennis they allow coaching they allow these type of things to occur why not on the women's side of things that's a double standard venus and serena's fought really hard for equal pay now this coaching thing i think this needs to be looked at and a lot of the commentators and professionals and former players have said this as well Coaching needs to be looked at. The rule needs to be changed. The reality is any sport you play in allows coaching. If you can adjust to your opponent's game plan via coaching, then you deserve to win. The reality here is every sport allows coaching. So let's say he was giving her signals. And what? I don't think the result would have been any different. I think Coco Golf it beats Marino 10 times out of 10. The reality here is, it's it's just like Marino said at the end, it just is what it is. That's my, Watch the match. She said it is what it is. She's not going to beat Coco Golf. But let's get into some preview and predictions. Um, Jasmine Pagliani and Big U. This match was suspended due to rain. Uh, Jasmine Pagliani, we are on serve. However, Big U has the uh, advantage. So um, the reality here is Jasmine Pagliani, I, told, I said this match would go over. And it's it's going to go over. So that was another lock. By the way, we're like um, 26 out of 29 in free predictions here. So, of course, the second day of... The first round has been postponed with a lot of rain delays, but this is a match here that will resume. And Jasmine Pagliani is a plus 400 underdog. Hey, why not put $5 on it or something? So, hey, take a look into that. Uh, Jasmine Pagliani could win this match. She very could. She already won one set. Uh, Madison Keys versus Kalinskaya. Uh, this is a match where um, Kalinskaya is getting two and a half free games in the first set hey why not take a shot on her um, or on the overall match she's getting five games take a look at one of the two uh, she's been very competitive each game so far in the first set has either gone to uh, deuce or um, the opponent has won at least um, two points off of the server so it's been close so far so just take a look at that and again Kalinskaya getting two and a half games in the first set not bad Madison Keys should win the match but you never know Kalinskaya is she's been very competitive and we can't forget what she did to Sloan Stevens last time they played similar competition uh, Keisha Juvan a uh, great great run at the Strasbourg Open against uh, Angelique Kerber this is the lock of the day um, as long as she comes in her focus and doesn't have a hangover and is depressed from losing she was very sad oh, poor Juvan uh, I like her as a lock of the day very reasonable price playing a qualifier she's she's been playing Juvan's been playing great great tennis um, what I think she's won what nine or ten of her last twelve, so you gotta take uh, gotta take Juvon here as a lock. That's a good pick. Uh, another match I want to take a look at is um, Caroline Garcia versus uh, Townsend. Uh, Townsend, we know if you follow the channel, she's a good doubles player. Um, that's what she's known for. Uh, these two ladies have played head to head. Caroline Garcia owns a head to head. Uh, 
Townsend's having a good clay season. That's why she's a favorite. Townsend's almost a two to one favorite here. Townsend uh, is nine and two on clay this year. Uh, she has 100 wins, 39 losses on clay for her career, 245 overall wins, 144 losses for Townsend. And Townsend in her last 10, um, she's hot. She's won eight of her last 10. She's beat Wang. Uh, she's beat uh, Katie Valinets. Uh, she's beat Abanda. She's beat actually Katie twice. She's beat Mandic. Um, she actually played Katie three times and she beat her twice. Um, but Towns is a good doubles player. She's very active uh, and she can move definitely for her size. She's going up against Caroline Garcia, who is definitely the veteran of the two. Caroline's only 28. It seems like she's like 33 or something. But Caroline Garcia, she's um, she hasn't really had anything going on for the clay season this year. But overall, she has 110 wins on clay, 386 wins overall. Her last 10 could be better. Uh, she's won six of her last 10 matches and some of those ones the Yastremka match in the Indian Wells That was a great one. Allison Van Yutwick, who's a good solid top 40 player. Uh, she's beat Georgi uh, She beat Hale up. Don't forget she beat Hale up at Dubai uh, She's lost to golf Zeng, Radikanyu and Bondar. So her losses have been against a much superior competition That's the big thing to understand between these two. Caroline's playing much much better competition Caroline's best at the Roland Garros was making the quarterfinal round and we saw her do that at 2017 um, she has had some good runs at these majors uh, we saw Caroline make the round of 16 in 2017 uh, Wimbledon we also saw her make the round of 16 at the 2016 um, Australian Open and uh, she's made the round of 32 four times at the US Open so Caroline Garcia can definitely get out of the first round the best that Townsend's done at the Rolling Girls was make the round of 32 and she did that uh, in 2014 quite quite some time ago there um, other than that she hasn't really done much at the majors but she has had a nice run at the US Open in 2019 we cannot forget that that was big for American tennis players um, but, I mean, in terms of these two ladies, it's... Caroline Garcia's got seven titles. She owns a head-to-head. Um, she's a decent clay player. Uh, I think she's going to have the better shot-making ability. Townsend, though, once she gets on the move, she can be pretty dangerous. Um, I can see Townsend mixing in a lot of drop shots, trying to get Caroline Garcia off balance, and trying to get her off the baseline. I see that happening a lot in this match, um, but Caroline Garcia overall, I mean, she's she's averaging about about four aces per game. So I think the serving ability has the ability to put her in better opportunities to win points. Uh, she's saving 62% of her break points when she has the option to convert against her opponent. She's converting at 35% break points. This is a match here where Caroline Garcia is, she's a pretty sizable underdog. Um, she's healthy. Uh, Townsend is playing good on clay, but it's, it's against a lot less players. So I like this match uh, for Caroline Garcia to win at least one set. It's a very, very reasonable price. And I possibly think Caroline Garcia should win the match outright. But that's another lock for you guys. Take Caroline Garcia to win at least one set. And that's a very, very good price. Um, I want to take a look at maybe, let's take a look at one other, um, let's do one other prediction. We still have the um, second day of the first round of predictions out there if you watched the last video, um, but I'm going to give you one more to make. And another match I like is uh, Roos versus Rabinkana, and that's a match if, um, you know, sometimes you never know how an athlete's body will respond after resting and um, coming back the next day. You know, a lot of the major professional athletes are used to at least a day of recovery. Um, but Rabinkin, if this match goes three sets, it looks like Russ is on the move and will win the second set. And I do like Rabinkin to close it out in the third set. I do like Kaskina to to defeat Rebecca Peterson. Peterson has has not looked good at all. 
I don't think that's going to change against someone superior on clay. Um, but I do want to take a look at the Camilla Giorgi versus Zhang match. Camilla Giorgi is a 28th seed, and we know that's because of her great run to essentially on the hard season last year in 2021. Um, but Zhang, I think, is having the better clay season. Camilla Giorgi is 0 for 3 on clay season this year. She hasn't won a match on clay at all. Historically, um, she literally, I mean, she, she loses a clay match for every one she wins. She has 111 wins on clay, 396 wins on her career. Um, I really don't know what to make of her career aside from having probably the best year of her career on tour last year. Um, it's just, I think she has too much going on. I mean, she's only won three of her last ten matches. Camilla Giorgi's lost to Tom Janovic, Pagula, Korpash. She's lost to Caroline Garcia, Kvitova, Alexandrova, Barty. All tough competition, okay? So I definitely want to put that out there. She's beat Ocean Dodden, she's beat Tan, and she's beat Martin Kova. Zhang, on the other hand, um, just n not really better. 2-5 and five this year on the clay season. Uh, overall on clay, again, she actually has a losing record on clay, 86 and 88. But she's very experienced. Um, twice as many wins, essentially, almost on tour than Georgie. 540 wins. Zhang on her last 10, not much better. Only winning four of her last 10. She's beat Travisian. She's beat De Lorenzo. She's beat Sershu, which is a great win. And she's beat Clara Tawson. Uh, she's lost to Coco Golf. You know, not a bad person to lose to. She's lost to Alex Androva, Simona Hela, Sabalenka, and Zemfeska. So she's also lost to some pretty good names. Uh, so you can't, you know. Uh, Zhang does own the head-to-head -head one love that did take place several years ago. I think, like, maybe 2016 or something like that. Uh, Zhang's 33, Camilla, Camilla's 30. Uh, both of these ladies in their 30s. Zhang's going to be the taller player. But Camilla Giorgi is essentially injured, right? Or, or something like that. Giorgi, um, Giorgi's, she averages about two aces per game. Um, in terms of her service games, uh, she won 63% of her service games. Her return games, um, th those numbers aren't that good. 33% of her return games. Um, Georgie makes, she's hit or miss, she makes a lot of mistakes. She's very aggressive. She goes for winners. She's not a rally player. This we all know. Uh, Zhang, on the other hand, she's winning much more consistently. Um, just, just under three aces per game. And the only thing that concerns me about Zhang is she makes a lot of double faults. And so can Camilla Giorgi as well. Uh, but she's winning 63, 64% of her first serves. Um, her return games, 25%. So even worse than Camilla Giorgi. In terms of her break point, save 44%. She's, she's not going to win if that doesn't get over 50 to 60% in this match here. Break points converted, 42%. So she's essentially just as good as saving break points as she is as converting them but the reality here is this all has the making for a match to go over georgie is a favorite though but is she injured or not we're not really sure i think of the two recent form both ladies look abhorrent they both look horrible but i do th i do feel more confident going with zang as the underdog camilla georgie should not be a favorite there should be a pick on even match and Camilla Giorgi just seems like she doesn't want to play tennis right now. It seems like her businesses and other things off the court are more important. And you saw how she did at her home, you know, last week against Aza Tomjanovic. She looked horrible against her home crowd. But again, historically, she's never won in Italy. Um, but the reality here is this does mean a little more. Maybe it should. I don't know. But I do like Zhang as the underdog. I like this match to go over, but then again, Camilla Giorgi might get hurt. She might call for the physio. She might retire. Too much doubt with Giorgi, so I like Zhang as another free pick. 
But um, nonetheless, guys, this has been Good Energy. Check the previous video for the rest of the draw today. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow covering the round two. Hopefully there's no more rain today. And again, this is Good Energy, guys. Please be respectful in the comments. And, you know, this is just a little treat for something to get away from all the distractions of life and all of the things that are just causing so much bad energy in the world this is good energy hope you enjoyed the tennis talk please like subscribe comment below donate to the paypal if you can i enjoy watching tennis i enjoy doing the free picks we are